Apply coordinate geometry to quadrilaterals. We are now going to look at a second example. You will find this on page 316 in the Namibia Ordinary Level Mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger and then I'll move up. Okay. Let's start. The figure shows a quadrilateral ABCD in which the points A and D lie on the Y axis and X axis respectively. C is the point this, 16 and 11, and the equation of AB is Y equals 2X plus 4. If AD and BC are perpendicular to AB, find the coordinates of A and D, the equation of BC, the coordinates of B. Okay, I think it's good that you write all the information in the sketch. So, just this is the equation of AB, so it's 2x plus 4. And take note, that is 90 and that is 90. Okay, so given that AB is this, where the line cuts the y-axis, Okay, remember it's this line. And when it cuts the y-axis, the value of x will be 0. So, <clears throat> in the place, I take the formula, and in the place of x, I put a 0. So it will cut the y-axis at 4. And where is it cutting the x-axis? At 0. So what will my point be? My point will just be 0 and 4. So where it cuts the x-axis, 0, 0, and where it cuts the y-axis, 4. It's not, okay, it's not cutting the x-axis. The coordinate of x will be 0, so 0 and 4. So, now I'm going to first find, before I find this point, I'm just going to find the equation first. Now, I know that this is perpendicular. Now, if I know that this, what is the gradient 2? So, what will this gradient be? This will be the reciprocal, which is a half and the signs will be different. So it will be minus a half. So, and I know that this line, I know already the value of C, do you see? It's cutting at 4. So the equation of this line, I'm going to write it in here. So it's going to be Y equals negative a half X plus 4. That's the equation. So again, where is this equation cutting the x-axis? So I'm going to make now the value of y zero. Okay, and this is what I did there. And then I just simplify and I get the value of x will be eight. So this point will be eight and zero. Okay, and then find the equation of BC, the equation of BC, Okay, so let's see what do I have. Again, I said we were perpendicular. So I again know that this one is also minus a half. Just I like this one because it's perpendicular. So if I want to find the equation, just like I have one, the gradient and one point. So I just fill in the gradient and I substitute the point and I get the value of C is 19 and there is my equation. And I can write it in again. This equation will now be y equals minus a half x plus 19. Okay. And then the coordinate of p. Now in this case, I don't know if the lines are parallel and all that things, so I have to follow the longer method. But if I have two equations, I have this equation and I have this equation, I can find this point by solving them simultaneously because that will be the point of intersection. So I just take my two equations and I solve them simultaneously. Okay? So what is this is my one equation, this is my other equation. And if I solve them simultaneously, can I just show you here? I put them just because this is y equals, so it's almost, can I show you? It's like I'm just substituting that in that place. So it's like I put it equal to each other. And then I start with solving it, and I will get my value. First I will get, let's just move this to this side. I will first get my value of x is 6, and as soon as I have that, I just substitute it in. So 2 times 6, that's 12, plus 4, that will be 16, and that will be my point B. So that's, that's also a way of finding a coordinate point. Okay, I want you to stop the video and I want you to do 
and I have to put it like this. I think I'm going to make it smaller. I want you to do try now 18. You can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, it's going to be quite long, so let's just start. Okay, let's start with number A. The figure shows a trapezium, okay, it's a trapezium, ABCD, in which AB is parallel to DC, it's indicated. Um, and BC is perpendicular, BC is perpendicular to both AB, AB, and DC. It seems to me the D is just not so clear. To DC. Okay. Um, the coordinates of A, B, and D. Okay, I, I like always to write it in. It's so easier then. So A is 4 and 2. Oh, there it is. 4 and 2. Then uh, B is 16 and 8. And then uh, which one? Oh, and B is, and C I don't have, but D I have. 5 and 10. Okay. Make sure that everything that stands there, that you notify it on your sketch and that you also start working from that sketch. Okay, but you can never use the sketch as a proof. You have to do it algebraically. So the equation of, find the equation of DC. Okay, so let's start. DC. The equation of DC, I'm just going to indicate where we are. Uh, DC. It's this one. The, okay, it's, it's the equation. Let's start first with DC. So what do I have on DC? I know that this is parallel. Oh, I don't have the equation, but I know that parallel lines, then the gradients will be equal. So I need that gradient. I, I, I don't have this gradient, but I ha and I don't have two points. So I have to look further for information. So I'm going to find the gradient first of this line. So I'm going to start by saying, okay, I'm going to write A, and what is that? 4 and 2, and I'm going to write B, and what is that? 16 and 8, and I'm first going to find, and don't forget, I always just like, just for order, this is point 1, this is point 2, and I'm going to find my gradient. of AB. And the formula, it's the difference in Y. Oh, let's just make it, then I can spare space. It's the difference in Y over the difference in X. So the difference in Y is 8 minus 2. The difference in X is 16 minus 4. So 8 minus 2 is 6. 16 minus 4 that's going to be 12, and that one is going to be a half. But I know that AB is parallel to DC, therefore the gradient of DC will also be a half. And now I can start. Now I'm going to start, okay. Now I can fill it in. I'm going to say y equals um, mx plus c. So y equals, and in the place of m, it's a half x plus c. Now I can take the point, I only have the point d. So the point d is going to be 5 and 10. So in the place of, this is x, this is y, in the place of y it's 10 equals a half, in the place of x 5 plus c, so 10 um, equals 2.5 plus c, so 10 minus 2.5 is equal to c, so the value of c is 7.5. I, I don't like to leave out steps, especially in the videos, because otherwise students or teachers or whoever struggle to follow. So I'd rather put all the steps. Okay. So if I'm asking the equation of these DC, so let's just put it in red. Therefore, DC will be equal to Y or the um, Y 
equals half x plus 7.5. Okay, now I must find, and I'm just going to write it in my sketch. Okay, and then I'm going to find BC. Okay, BC. Now, it, again, it's perpendicular. That's your clue. So if this is perpendicular, I already know that this gradient, this gradient will be the reciprocal, which is 2, and it will be negative. Okay, so now I can start by saying, okay, I can now find for me, I'm starting by saying Y. Um, I can just say I'm going to find BC y equals mx plus c so y equals and now it's perpendicular as I said so um, I'm just saying perpendicular you can just put it here on the side so the perpendicular gradient will be negative 2 so it's negative 2 x plus c. So now I take my point and what is it? It's 16 and 8. So b and now I'm just putting it in. So in the place of let's just see y. This is x. This is y. So it's just going to be 8 equals negative 2 and x is 16 plus c. So 8 equals negative 32 plus c and the value of c is going to be 8 plus 32 so the value of c is 40 so therefore the equation of bc will be y equals negative 2x plus 40 Okay, and now I'm just going to move on. So the equation of D, B, C, the coordinate of C. Now, I just want to show you. You already found this equation also now. I'm just going to write it here because I'm going to make space. So if I want to find, I have the two equations and they intersect there. Do you see? And if I want to find it, I must solve it simultaneously. So, and I'm just going to clean here because everything is on my sketch. Okay, and now I can start with number B. So in number B, I'm just going to, so I know that the one equation is a half x plus 7.5. The other equation is minus 2x plus 40. So if I solve it sum, so I'm going to solve it sum, sum, <laughs> I'm just simultaneously. Okay, so I'm just putting this equal to each other. I'm not going to do elimination. I'm just actually going to do substitution, but you can do elimination. So it's almost like I'm just taking this and I throw it in there. And if I do that, I'm just going to say it's a half x plus 7.5 is equal to negative 2x plus 40. So this is going to be a half x plus 2x and that is going to be 40 minus 7.5 and this is going to be two and a half x and this one is just going to be 32.5 and I divide by two and a half or 2.5 and I divide by two and a half and I find that the value of x is 13. And then I just substitute in any, rather take the one without the fraction. So y equals negative 2x plus 40. So y equals negative 2, 13 plus 40. And that's negative 26 plus 40. And that is going to give me an answer of 
thirteen, no, fourteen, sorry. So therefore, um, C is going to be thirteen and fourteen. Okay. So always, if you want to find that point, take the two and solve it simultaneously. And now, and I like always to put it in my sketch, because then I can see it. So let's put it in. I have C now. What is C? 13 and 14. And then the length of CD. So where is CD? CD. I have C and I have D. Again, I'm going to make space. Okay, and again, I'm just going to say, okay, what is C? Um, this is known on the C. C is 13 and 14. And what is, what is it, CD? What is D? 5 and 10. Oh, and this is just distance. Pythagoras theorem, which is saying the difference in X squared plus the difference in y squared. And that's going to be x1, y1, x2, y2. And that is going to be, and now I'm just going to substitute, that's going to be 5 minus 13 squared plus, don't forget it's at, and <clears throat> then this one is going to be 10 minus 14 squared, which is going to give me this one is going to be negative 8 squared plus negative 4 squared, which is going to give me 64 plus 16, which is going to give me the square root of 80. Okay. I just want to show you, if you, you, you can make it to three significant figures, and, um, or you can just do it like this, and I'm just going to show you this, because I don't think I showed you in a previous video, and this is just for extra. I break it up into prime factors. So 2, and this is 40, and then this is 2, and this is 20, and this is 2, and this is 10, and this is 2, and this is 5, and this is 5, and this is 1. So let's just see. 16 times 5 I think it's going to work so if I want to simplify this and I'm just this is more in higher level but I just want to show you but you leave it or three significant figures but if I if I just do this and I say 2 to the power of 4 times 5 and then it's almost like I can take because these are 2 I say 4 divided by 2 so this is going to be me 2 and then this is 40 by, and this 2 to the power 2, but the 5 stays inside because there's just 1. This one I take out because it's even. 40 by 2 is 2. That's going to be, give me 4 square root 5. And that's also. So, and I just want to give you also this, the 3 significant figure. And so that would have been 8.94. And if you press this on the calculator, so square root 5 times 4. And you will get exactly the same, 8.94. So just break it up into prime factors and then see what you can take out, okay, by dividing by this square root 2. And then you can simplify it like this. Okay, I just want to say in this last video on coordinate geometry, there's three formulas. So the one is the distance, the other one is the gradient, and the other one is the midpoint. And with that three formulas, and, and the, also know the properties of quadrilaterals, of triangles, you can do coordinate geometry.